Hi again! In this lesson, you're going to learn another linear structure, a stock. We'll discuss what a stock in data structure, what are the common applications of it, and finally, we are going to write C-sharp code to implement the basic stock operations using array. So let's begin. A stock is another abstract data type that is commonly used in most programming languages. As the name implies, stock is based on how this type of structure operates like in a real-world stacking of items which means items arranged in layers, one on top of the other, like a stack of plates, a deck of cards, or a pile of papers. The idea is that items in a stack are intended to be added and removed only at one end, in which case, only the topmost item of the stack is accessible at any given time. And because of this type of behavior, or should I say restriction or constraint, this type of structure is often called LIFO, or last in, first out meaning the last item that gets into the container is also the first item that gets out of it. Or sometimes it is referred to as philo, or first in, last out. And if you come to think of it, the first item that gets in will be the last item to get out of the container. So you might ask, what kind of applications would require such kind of structure that would limit the operations to accessing of items to only one end? In fact, there are lots of uses for stack in the field of computer programming. One very common that you usually use but perhaps you didn't notice is that your text editor. Stack keeps track of every character that you type or every formatting that you apply so that when you press Ctrl Z or undo, it removes the last thing that you do. Depending on your text editor, how far you can click undo, which means how deep your stack can store items in it. Another example is your web browser where you can move forward or backward from the web pages that you have visited. A similar scenario is your file explorer, where you can go back or up one level, or perhaps if you are fascinated with how operating systems and programming languages work, there are dozens of stack applications there. A simple example is a function or a method call. When the main method calls another function for the application to properly keep track of the sequence of execution of instructions, a stack is used to store the address of the current instruction before jumping to execute the code inside another function. This is used to keep track of the correct order of program execution that, as the current method finishes its execution, it can go back to the calling program to continue with the rest of the code. So a stack ADT has some very simple operations, the push operation that accepts one argument, an item to be stored in a stack, in this illustration, three items 5, 14, and 10 were pushed into the stack one at a time. The pop operation receives no arguments. This removes and returns the topmost item from the stack. And the pick or top operation has no argument as well. This operation only returns the topmost item of the stack but doesn't remove it. And the clear operation which removes all items from the stack. In .NET, both the generic and non-generic version of the stack are readily available. Let's try using the stack class under the system that collections namespace. I'll type stack cards is equal to new stack, and then I'll push an object to it, say king of spades. I'll push two more objects, five of clubs and four of diamonds. Now let's display all the cards from my stack using the for each loop. For each item in my cards collection, I'll right line each card, then to check the topmost element, I'll say cards that pick. And to remove the topmost card, I'll say cards that pop. I'll copy this code twice to remove all items from my stack. And let's check the output. As you can see, using the for each loop, my cards are king of spades, five of clubs, and four of diamonds. And the topmost element is four of diamonds because this is the last in item. And once I call the pop method, the four of diamonds was returned and removed from the stack. You can verify that when we call the pop method again, the topmost item that was removed was five of clubs, and finally, king of spades was removed last. And basically, that's how a stack works. Now, to provide an implementation, we can either implement it using an array or a linked list, but for this video, I will implement it using array. I'll show the linked list implementation of stack in some later videos. So to begin, let's create a class and name it as stackarray.cs. In our previous implementation of array list, we use an array of integer. For this, we are going to declare an array of object instead, so that our collection is not only limited to holding integer items, but of any type. 
I'll also declare an integer variable tap. In the constructor, I'll define the array to size 5 and initialize the tap variable to point to negative 1. This denotes that our stack is initially empty upon creation. For the push operation, I'll accept one parameter item of type object and before pushing the item to our stack, I need to check first the stack if it is not yet full so that it can still accommodate additional item to be added. To assign the new item to the stack, we need to increment first the top pointer. So from negative 1, which is empty, now it points to 0 to store the first item. However, if the stack is already full, I'll throw an exception saying stack overflow. And it is now the responsibility of the calling program to handle it properly. Or you can always implement the concept of dynamic array that you learned from the previous lesson to dynamically increase the stack size as needed. For the pop operation, I'll define a method pop with a return type of object. I need to check first if the stack is not empty, so I'll say if the top is greater than negative 1. Now, before removing the topmost item, I need to store first the topmost item to a local variable. Then, all we need to do is just to adjust the top pointer by subtracting it with 1. And finally, we return the item that was recently removed to the calling program. However, if the stack is empty, I'll throw an exception saying stack underflow if the calling program tries to call the pop method when the stack is empty. Then for the pick operation, this is almost similar to the pop method. The main difference is that it doesn't remove the topmost item. So I'll just copy this code and then I'll delete this code since it still points to the current topmost item. Lastly, the clear operation is the simplest. All we need to do is set the top pointer to negative 1. And that will do it. Now, in addition to this, I'll create another method called printStack. Though it is not part of the actual stack operation, let's add this to print all items from our stack, top to bottom, to the console window. Now, to test our stack class, I'll use the same calling program. Instead of using the built-in stack class, I'll change it to our stack array class and then I'll replace this for each loop with a single method call, print stack. Now, let's check the result. Our stack array implementation successfully pushes items to the stack and prints all items from topmost to bottommost. And then the call to pick method returns the topmost item, 4 of diamonds. And finally, the pop method was called three times to return and remove the three items in the last in first out order. Let me give you a very simple program to illustrate the usefulness of stack data structure. Let's create a program that converts decimal to binary. I'll start by creating a stack and I'll call it bits. Then I'll ask the user to enter a decimal number to be converted. I'll store it to an integer type variable I'll call dec. Then I'll display a message saying decimal then plus dec is equal to. Then I'll perform the actual conversion process here. If you still recall how to convert decimal number to binary, we continuously divide the number by 2 and stops only when the quotient reaches 0. But the one that you store is the remainder, which signifies the equivalent binary number, and it should be displayed in reverse order. So to do this, I'll use a do-while loop with the condition that loops back as long as dec is not equal to 0. Then, using our stack bits, I'll push every remainder to it, then divide the decimal number by 2, and that should do it. Finally, Outside this loop, I'll call the print stack method and I'll display a message in binary. I'll do one modification in our print stack method. Instead of write line, I'll use write to display all bits in just one line. Now, let's check the output. I'll enter 14 and it says decimal 14 is equal to 1110 in binary. Now let's try another. I'll enter 25 and it says decimal 25 is equal to 11001 in binary. And it works perfectly. Now, it is your time to code. And again, thanks for watching. And if you learned something of value, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials.